to have him on and also Mika yesterday you had Kristen Welker asking Donald Trump yep. the question are you an agent of Russia have you ever worked for Russia the president finally after two days of brushing that question aside answered the question but my gosh uh, even more concerns arising especially in the national security community and even some people working with Donald Trump about why he yeah. behaves the way he does towards Vladimir Putin. And of course, now news coming out that he was trying to pressure aides to give Vladimir Putin his biggest prize, and that is a NATO. withdrawal from NATO. Yeah, no, it all points to every, you know, everything we're looking at. Days after revealing a federal counterintelligence probe into the president's relationship with Russia, the New York Times is reporting alarm among national security officials who are fearful President Trump will attempt to withdraw from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Senior administration officials told the Times that Trump privately expressed his desire to pull out of NATO several times over the course of 2018. And, and, and by the way, Mika, uh, that organization that was started after the Cold War has kept Russia in check now for 70 years. And this is no what they want for him to do this. Well, of course, no president, no pre nobody that's ever walked into that office since NATO was formed has ever thought for one second about shutting down NATO. Not one second, because everybody that's ever walked across the threshold of the White House and into the Oval Office knows that NATO has always been our check against Soviet expansion and against Russian expansion. And only Vladimir Putin, only Vladimir Putin would be wanting the United States of America to withdraw from NATO. 100%. And uh, to move on, that his reported attempt to keep his meetings with Vladimir Putin, Trump's attempt to keep his meeting with Vladimir Putin secret, is adding to the concern. Current and former officials who support the alliance said they feared Trump could return to his threat as allied military spending continued to lag behind the goals the president had set. In the days around a tumultuous NATO summit meeting last summer, they said Trump told his top national security officials that he did not see the point of the military alliance, which he presented as a drain on the United States. NATO's foundational purpose is to serve as a check on Russia. The White House pointed to President Trump's remarks, calling America's commitment to NATO very strong and the alliance very important, but declined to comment further. This after Putin welcomed President Trump's announcement of withdrawal from Syria. And senators will get to vote on a resolution today that criticizes the Trump administration's decision to ease sanctions on oil companies linked to Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska. So, of course, Willie, the White House is, uh, and, and those around the president, uh, they're statements over the past couple of days that nobody has been tougher on Russia. It's just an absolute lie. Uh, you have the president of the United States trying to get out of the single most important alliance the United States has had in the post-war world. You have Donald Trump doing, which, which by the way, has been every Soviet leader's goal. And now this former Soviet KGB uh, agent's goal uh, that's been the top priority, breaking up NATO, undermining NATO. And then, of course, what would their number one goal be geopolitically today? Getting the United States out of Syria. Check. And now you have Donald Trump trying to ease sanctions on an oligarch close to Vladimir Putin. Yeah, this is the biggest prize for Vladimir Putin, something he's tested when he annexed Crimea mm -hmm. in 2014. He wants the breakup of NATO. He wants a split between Europe and the United States. And it goes back, Rick Tyler, if you remember July of last year, last summer when the president went to NATO. Remember, he burst out of those meetings, went to a bank of microphones and declared that he'd gotten everybody to up their commitment to NATO. The next person at the microphone was French President Macron, who said, no, actually, that's not what happened in that room. But again, it's either the president doing Vladimir Putin a favor or it's the president treating foreign policy and geopolitics like a business transaction in New York City where guys got to chip in more. Yeah, but it's more than that. I think it's uh, shocking over the last few days that you put all this in context. The talking points of, of the U.S. getting out of NATO 
uh, sounds like a puppet regime reacting to Putin's talking points. That's literally what it sounds like. Mm. These are Putin's talking points. And he is smart enough to know that when he says that the, that the our NATO alliance, which, by the way, was probably the, one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century, because it keeps us safe, not just our allies, but it keeps us safe, and it's a bargain. The idea that somehow we, we pay for NATO, we don't pay for NATO. NATO pays for itself. Each of the con countries contribute to their own defense. They're supposed to reach 2% of their own GDP. The United States and a few others, Greece, ironically, is one of them because their economy is so bad. Uh, but it has been one of, the greatest, it's one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century to keep us safe. It has worked uh, immeasurably. And the idea, who is asking to pull out of NATO except for right. Vladimir Putin? Yeah, and, and you know, John Heilman, uh, right now there is a question uh, with, within the FBI and within a, a sizable chunk of America whether Donald Trump is, uh, is working on behalf of Russia. Uh, certainly, whether, he, whether he's doing it formally or whether he's doing it because Vladimir Putin has compromised material on him. But if, if someone were an agent for the Russians sitting in the Oval Office, what are the three things that they would want to do the most? Number one, they would want to disband NATO. Number two, uh, they would want to ease sanctions uh, on, on oligarchs, people close to Vladimir Putin. And number three, the biggest prize right now, withdraw all American troops from Syria and start turning the Middle East over to Russia and an ex-Soviet spy. Yeah, and I'd, and I'd add one more, Joe, to that list. I'm not sure where you'd rank it in Vladimir Putin or any Russian uh, leader's hierarchy, but that would be to undermine uh, the fabric of American democratic institutions and to cause internal dissent and dissension uh, within the United States. That, that to, to, well, to, and, and, and John, hey, let's try one more also. How about attacking the intel communities right. that have chased the Soviet sure. Union's designs for... for, for, for uh, for uh, everything that they did uh, from 1917 forward and, and now causing Vladimir Putin fits. I mean, Donald Trump is actively undermining the FBI, the CIA, the intel community, and his lackeys are doing the same thing. There was actually a buffoon on Fox News that talked about abolishing the FBI. Right. That's how crazy it's mm -hmm. got. Yes, it's, it's, it's madness. And, and I, I bundled that all up in a giant, uh, in, a, in one giant kind of catch-all for these essential American institutions. The law enforcement and intelligence community is one. There are, the courts are another. Uh, uh, there are a variety of them, right? But we've talked many times for the last two years about Donald Trump as kind of uh, with, his, with his head in some ways, kind of a battering ram against American institutions. Those are the foundation of what makes the country strong. The country's strength is what counterbalances uh, Russian counterbalances Russia on the world stage, and particularly Russian aggression. So if you're Vladimir Putin, ripping to shreds American institutions is one giant goal, and then everything that you pointed out on the other world stage is another. I think, you know, it's not, I think, sometimes helpful to, to discuss the notion of Trump as a, a Russian agent, only because I think people think that makes him somehow like an undercover spy or something. I do think at, that, that the notion that he's an asset, unwitting or, or witting. Asset, exactly. that, that, uh, that, no, I'm, I'm not criticizing you. I just think it's, and I think it's agent doing the work of the, of the Soviets is technically could be right. true, but I do just think asset right. is probably the word that doesn't cause people to immediately shut their ears sometimes. Whether it's witting, whether uh -huh. it's unwitting, it's the big question that's on the table right now uh, no. about yeah. him. Yeah. And, the fact, and the fact that he said yesterday, I've never worked for mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. just made you think over and over again about our two previous presidents embroiled in potential impeachments, uh, Bill Clinton and Richard Nixon saying, Bill Clinton, I never had sexual relations yeah. with that woman. And Richard Nixon, I am not a crook. Turned out they were lying. Maybe Donald Trump is too. Well, it was the first time well, he actually and, gave and, an answer to Willie. that too, Joe. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Willie also. Yeah, he, he, John, John is right. It is asset and not agent. Uh, it's, that's me at 6.03 in the morning. Yeah. But mm. let's just, let's just state what's obvious. Donald Trump could never be an agent. Uh, for Russia because he, he, and I'm serious, he doesn't have the bandwidth to do it. He has, doesn't have the discipline to do it. Uh, he blurts everything out that's in, in his mind, but is he an asset? Uh, you know what? 100%. Just, just, <laughs> just judging, 100% he might be. Uh, let's put it that way, Mika. But again, you, you, know, you judge a, 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 a tree by its fruits. 
uh, you look at what Donald Trump has been trying to do on the international stage, and there is not a Republican on Capitol Hill today that wouldn't say that what he has been doing is is trying to help Putin, uh, praising Putin. I, uh, uh, Willie, I mean, his words and deeds leave no doubt that, that this guy is trying to help Russia any way he can. Well, at the very least, he's an easy mark for Vladimir Putin. And Susan Page, we had that moment, we're looking at the tape right here, where he stopped on his way to New Orleans, took some questions from reporters, and you had NBC's Kristen Welker ask him in an extraordinary moment. We've gotten numb to these moments over the last couple of years, but whether or not he was working for Russia, whether or not the President of the United States was working for Russia, a question the President had to address and finally gave a straight answer on it after dancing around it in his interview with Jeanine Pirro on Saturday night. You know, what a moment, not just that this question be asked, but, but that no one would doubt that it needed to be asked. It right. needed to be asked right. a second time because he didn't directly respond the first time he was asked by a, by a friendly interviewer. You know, it, it seems to me we're back to the, you know, we're coming up at the two-year mark since President Trump's inauguration, and it seems to me we're back to the, a fundamental puzzle from that campaign, which is what accounts for the president's, Donald Trump's attitude toward Russia that we saw at the Republican convention and, and during that campaign. And that, that is a question that has, that has not yet really been answered. This latest piece of evidence, this shocking New York Times story mm -hmm. about serious consideration of the United States withdrawing from NATO, it's, it's, these are just extraordinary times. It really is. And Mika, I hate to just keep going back to this, but it is so critical. And I remember Jay Norlinger uh, at the National Review saying uh, in 2016 that he thought the most important moment in the campaign as far as an interview went may have been when Donald Trump came on our show in December of 2015 and when pressed on Vladimir Putin, called him a strong leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when pressed several times by all of us uh, over the fact that he assassinated journalists and he assassinated political opponents and whether that caused Donald Trump concern, his response, we kill a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. And was then talking about U.S. soldiers in Iraq. And so he was blaming our soldiers and Marines and uh, and, and, and U.S. troops to Vladimir Putin assassinating journalists. It's, that, was, that was a telling moment. That was and, a huge moment. And, and, and raised questions not only in our minds, but in a lot of other people's minds. But you can just trace events from that point forward, and they just don't make sense. No, none, of don't. The, none of them make sense. <laughs> his kowtowing in Helsinki doesn't make sense. His, his telling aides he wants to get out of NATO does not make sense. Yeah. No president that has been in his chair, sitting in his chair before him, has ever even considered that for a moment. Well, I, I know that moment for us was a big one, and we looked at him differently ever since that moment. You know, it, it was a, you could see our faces in real time on television, literally transition from seeing him as, you know, a reality star buffoon who kind of is bumbling his way toward the presidency because of his branding ability. We saw that he could win. We also saw at that moment, like, whoa, what is going on here? And we looked at him differently ever since, and he gave us material to worry about as it pertained to Russia every step of the well, way. And, and Willie, he continues to do that. I mean, I know you remember, I remember you on set that day, uh, all of us, we, we were shocked and for good reason. It just didn't make sense. Like Helsinki didn't make sense. Like, you know, like this NATO uh, situation didn't make sense. Like Syria doesn't make like sense. Like calling Russia strong you start, and powerful. You, you start stacking 20, 30, 40 things as it pertains to Vladimir Putin up that just make absolutely no sense. And my gosh, uh, a narrative emerges that becomes deeply disturbing and requires us to ask that question that Kirsten, uh, Chris Wilker, Wilkins asked Kristen yesterday. Wilker, yep. Wilker asked yesterday. It's early. It's yeah, right. no, I mean, listen, the, and that critic, the question you asked him in December of 2015, where he got that answer where he said, we kill a lot of people too was odd for many reasons. Among them was there wasn't really a criticism directly of Hillary Clinton, who he expected to run against, or a criticism of the sitting president, Barack Obama. It was an odd statement 
of equivalence yeah. between the United States and Russia that didn't yes. add up to us and continues not to add up, not to add up.